Hello, everyone. And so um, do you prefer Maddie or do you prefer Edith? I think probably, well, I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't assume. <laughs> you know, Edith is the name I've had my whole life and Maddie is. <laughs> so you can call me Edith or call me. I don't care. Okay. So on the top of your um, right hand side of your screen, does it say comments and um, something else? Private chat. Yeah. Okay. If you click on the part that says comments, as people come in, if they ask you questions, you'll actually see them, but I can also pull them up on the screen if it doesn't, if it doesn't pull up, like just like I did there. Sure. Yep. So, yep. All right, so Edith, I, I really, I really, really appreciate you coming today. Um, so I usually start and just have you um, tell us about each one of your series, whatever you'd like to share, show us your book covers, anything like that. Awesome, thank you. Thank you so much for having me, Tiffany. This is really yeah. fun. Um, so I, my first book came out in 2012 and Actually, I don't have a copy upstairs. There's two books in the Lauren Rousseau Mysteries, written as Edith Maxwell. Um, and then I got a three-book contract with Kensington Publishing for a, a cozy series set on an organic farm. Mm. Of locavores, local foods enthusiasts. And that ended up having five books in it. And Mulch Do About Murder is the fifth book. <laughs> um, and that's our late Cat Preston on the cover, who was oh. a Norwegian doesn't look exactly like him, of course, but he was a Norwegian forest cat. He died uh, two years ago. Um, yeah. And I loved writing this series. I had a small organic room myself for a while, a couple decades ago. So oh, it was really fun to get back into that world without having to do all the heavy lifting. <laughs> I could just write about it. Um, and then I started the Country Store Mysteries with Kensington Publishing. And th that was the first time Maddie Day was born. Uh, they wanted me to use a pen name. Um, so this book just came out. No, I'm figuring out the screen here. Uh, yep. No greater crime. <laughs> Perfect. There we go. <laughs> and uh, this is the the ninth book in the series. Um, I love this series. Wobbling around here. What? I love that series. Oh, thank it's you. so much fun. And this is actually their version of my late tuxedo cat Birdie. Uh, who is the cat in the book, um, exactly with his same name and all of his curiosity and silly um, antics. Um, and he died like four years ago, four or five. But I love that he lives on in the books, every single book. In no, fact, no. Uh, Nacho Average Murder was book <laughs> seven. And that um, I had my protagonist, Robbie Jordan, so, so that, I should tell you a little about the series. That series is set in a fictional town called South Lick in southern Indiana. And um, um, Robbie Jordan is a chef and carpenter, and she owns a country store, um, restaurant, and, and store um, called Pans and Pancakes. Pans and Pancakes. And, uh, but she's a transplant from Santa Barbara. She grew up in Santa Barbara, California. I happen to be a native Southern Californian not quite that far north, the Pasadena area. Um, so I went, I had a lovely trip. We had a lovely trip to do research in Santa Barbara in February, oh, nice. about three or four years ago. Um, and even in that book, there's a cat that looks just like Birdie in the Nacho Average Cafe um, where she's staying in the bed and breakfast upstairs. So that was really fun. And his name is Pajaro, which means bird in Spanish. Oh, oh, that's he's cool. Every, he's basically, Birdie's basically in every book. Um, so that series has right now been extended through book 11. Oh, I've nice. Turned, that's yeah, exciting. I've turned in book 10, uh, Batter Off Dead. Batter Off Dead. <laughs> um, that'll be out next February. And I don't have a printout of the cover, but it's a great cover. Um, and I'm about a third of the <coughs> Quarter of the way right through writing um, Four Leaf Cleaver, which is book 11. And guess when that's set? St. Patrick's Day. Um, oh, I love it. And there's a, an Irish, televised Irish food com competition going on in the restaurant. And of course, somebody dies. Somebody's murdered. <laughs> of course. Sorry. And so that series has um, recipes in the back of every book every book. And in fact, last night I recipe tested um, an Irish stout and steak pie 
Oh my gosh. Quite good. So I'm going to include that recipe it in the book. Sounds delicious. Right? Um, and then I also write the Cozy Capers book group mysteries under Maddie Day. Love it. And those have recipes. Those are set on Cape Cod um, in a fictional town, but in an area near Falmouth where I um, I go a couple times a year. I rent a little cottage on the off season, so it's cheap. And it's a Quaker cottage. I'm a Quaker. Um, uh, so that is set in a town called West Ham. There's an Eastham on the Cape, but there isn't a Westham. So that's the name of my town. And um, Murder at the Lobster Shack is book three. And it'll be out um, in uh, at the end of November. I in know, November. and I'm ready for it. So I, I'm, I'm caught up and ready for it. I'm so excited. Good. This is an advanced cut. This is an arc. And I could give away a couple. <coughs> oh, that's awesome. If, if we get people logging in today. And if you want to review it, I'd be happy to send you a couple. Oh, that's you, awesome. You, Tiffany. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I have like, I still have like 12 arcs. And I, I don't ever want to get to pub date with arcs in my office here. Oh, that's awesome. Um, I used to do a lot of net galley. You yeah. know, um, and I had to, uh, maybe about four months ago, I cut myself off. I mean, like I had to cut myself off because I don't have self-control with books <laughs> and that guy just keeps letting you request. Like, they're like, oh, oh you've requested, yeah. sure. And then like, and I'll do it. Cause I'm like, oh, that looks good. And that looks, so I had to like, so I'm always excited when I see arcs that, you know, because I, yeah, I had to, Ooh. so I have Wait, to I ask. Have one more series to talk oh, about. yeah, 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 please. I'm so sorry. So I also write a historical mystery series, the Quaker Midwife Mysteries, um, which are set right here in Amesbury, where I live, Massachusetts. And they feature a Quaker midwife. This is the, the latest book, A Changing Light. Um, there's seven in this series. Um, they feature a Quaker midwife in the late, late 1880s, 1890. Um, who rides around on a bicycle and hears secrets and helps solve crimes. And the the first four books, no, the first four and the sixth books were all nominated for an Agatha Award for Best Historical Mystery. And book four, Charity's Burden, won the Agatha. Oh, and that, that teapot behind me, Agatha Award. That's amazing. So that's a huge, huge honor. That's like the winning the Oscars, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. That is, that's awesome. I, I did the malice this past year and it was amazing. Uh -huh. The one online um, right, a right. few months ago or whatever. Yeah, it was awesome. I really enjoyed it. And, you know, I know a lot of people um, were disappointed they couldn't do it in person. Those of that people, a lot of people that had, and I get that, you know, there's a lot missing, but for someone like me, I probably wouldn't have been able to experience it in person just because of the location of it. So yeah. I was thrilled with with being able to, you know, do it, do it virtually. So I hope they do some sort of hybrid for that because it was so cool and so much fun to be a part of. You know, if you can in the future, you really should come in person. It's I would love so to. Much fun and there's so many fans and so many authors and people are really friendly and it's it's our it's our tribe, you know. I will tell you that all the cozy mystery authors that I've reached out to have just been the most kind and gracious. And, yeah. and I was signed up to go to BoucherCon. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, so um, are you, did you have to do a lot of research for the Quaker series? Yes, particularly a historical series, a lot of research about daily life, about transportation, about police procedure, um, clothes, Quakers, like you name it. I mean, I am a, I've been a member of Amesbury Friends Meeting for 32 years. And that's the meeting house in the books. Really? That's, that's so interesting. So um, John Greenlee Whittier was on the building committee, and he is a character in the books. He lived just down the street. So, um, lot, but I absolutely a lot of research. And then a little more for each book, you know? Yeah. On the topic. Yeah. I like, I love doing historical research, actually. And we live in a, Actually, we live in the house that Rose Carroll lived in. So I put her in our house, which was built in 1880 for mill workers who work, you know, a block away in the mills. Oh, my gosh. That's so incredibly yeah. interesting. Yeah. It's a lovely historic town that I live in. 
and it's been really fun to, you know, incorporate it. And I, mm-hmm. I walk all over town and I walk for my errands and I walk to church and, um, you know, I can plot stories as I'm walking around the streets. Oh, that building. Oh, maybe that house. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Hello, Kay. It's Hi, nice Kay. to join us. Uh, oh, she, she, Kay really likes historical cozies. I have, I have um, multiple that I read and multiple that are on my everlasting TBR that I want to get to. <laughs> and a lot, and I do enjoy, I enjoy historical cozies a lot as well. Um, it's they're not, they're not shelved as cozies. They're shelved as historicals. Oh, okay. Okay. And my books, they can get a little darker than a cozy, but there's definitely no obscenities or sex or gratuitous violence. You know, this they follow sort of the cozy guidelines. Um, the subject matter can get a little bit darker because it was a it was a hard time then. That's- yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So when you created your pen name and mm-hmm. and you started writing as Maddie Day, is there significance to to Maddie or Day? No. <laughs> Not really. Okay. <laughs> I, I wanted I proposed Ruthie Drew because I've always loved the name Ruth. Um, one of my grandmothers and one of my aunts was named Ruth. And if I'd had a daughter, I, she would have been Ruthie. Um, and Drew, to, to honor Nancy Drew, but my editor said, oh, that sounds too old. I kind of went well. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> so I happened to have a great niece named Maddie, who was then like 16. And I thought, well, that's, that sounds young. I, whatever. It wasn't actually the best pen name because somebody already had maddieday.com. Really? Like the URL was there. There's other Maddie Days on the internet, on Facebook. So I have to be Maddie Day author. But I seem to be the only Maddie Day author. So that's fine. <coughs> gotcha. That's I think the day was smart because I think the closer to the front of the alphabet, they say is, you know, and, and people always say, oh, it's Easy to spell and easy to pronounce. Also. Yeah, that that's definitely true. But right. yeah, people always say, "Oh, when you go in, you might only look at you know uh, some one row." And I'm like, "If I go into a bookstore, you better fish me out because I'm looking at everything." So, Not but uh, right. yeah, oh yeah, yeah. So, well, that's really interesting. Do you read a lot of cozies? Oh, you know, I read almost exclusively cozies and historical mysteries. Yeah. Um, I just read, I just finished um, Jen McKinley's new, newest rom-com, Wait For It. And I loved it, but I don't usually read that genre. I, but I happen to love her rom-coms. And the one before, uh, Paris is Always a Good Idea. They're both great reads. They have sex scenes. So <laughs> careful if you don't want to read that. <laughs> and I don't usually read that. And I actually was kind of going, hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> I have nothing against sex, but it's sort of like reading all the details is, is a little uh, surprising. Um, but yeah. she does a good job of it. So basically I read, I almost exclusively read books written by women with female protagonists. It's very rare. Sometimes I'll pick up a Joe Fender book. Um, occasionally I'll find a male author who writes a male protagonist that sort of doesn't offend me. But I started reading, you know, back in the 80s and 90s, I started reading Sarah Paretsky and Sue Grafton and um, Catherine Hall Page and Susan Wittig Albert and whoever writes the um, the Goldie, the Colorado Catering. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Diane Mott Davidson. Another three namer. Yeah. I started reading them. I went, oh, this is where I belong. Not reading Robert Parker and all the men who are talking about women's boobs and legs. Like, I, I don't need to. Come on. Um, and the women, you don't have to read that. And they're great stories, if not better. So um, that's what I read. Yeah, I'm a I'm a mainly cozy. I do see read some romance and I like some women's fiction. Uh, but I, I probably probably 70 percent of what I read is just cozy mysteries. I absolutely right. love them. They're so much fun. They're just right up my alley. I have a lot of work to do to keep up with my friends' books. <laughs> I mean, the <laughs> wicked authors alone. Tomorrow, Julie, Julia Henry. All right, Julie Henricus has a new book out. Wreathed in Havoc, I think it's called. It's her Garden Squad. Yes. And next month, 
Jesse Crockett, Jessica Ellicott has a new new historical when her um, English Village ones comes out. I loved her maple syrup Vermont series. Yes. I really wish it would have went more. It was so much fun. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. No, they're all, all the wicked authors are are great. And just keeping up with them alone. That that could, and yeah. Ellen Byron and Leslie Budowitz and um Annette Dashafi. I mean, I they just like and the historical ones, Nancy Harriman and Alyssa Maxwell, no relation. Um <laughs> Clara McKenna, like I still haven't read Clara McKenna's new one. And then and then Reese Bowen. How do we keep up with oh, Reese Bowen, right? The Royal Spinus. I'm so excited. I, it's one of my favorite series. I have that's one of the historical cozies that I absolutely love. I love yeah. it. Oh my gosh. Yeah. No, she's um, and she's you know, she's writing the Molly books now with her daughter. So the Molly, Molly Murphy books are gonna restart, which I love those. I saw some uh, something she did where she was talking about that. I don't remember what it was. There was something that I was on that she was on, and I, I saw her, and I was like, oh, that's so exciting. Um, and you mentioned Jim McKinley, even her series. Like, So I read so many cozies that sometimes I – I mean, I'm in the middle of uh, several – that I'll be like, yeah, I'm caught up in the country store series. And then I'll look and like three more have been out. And I feel like like Jen McKinley, like with the cupcake shop or some of them that really, really push out books. And maybe some of the independently published, like a Tanya Kappas. Every time I feel like I'm almost cut up in campers and criminals, like six more are being released in six oh. months time. And I'm like, it's incredible. Yeah. They yeah. write faster than I can read. No. Okay. That's not true. <laughs> I know. I write three or four books a year and short story. A few that's a, that's yeah. still, think about that. There's only 365 days a year. That's incredible. Four books. That's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. Um, but I can write a first draft in about six weeks. Wow. Um, yeah. That's less than two months. Yeah, it's less than two months. <laughs> <laughs> Just like, wow, wow, wow. Um, this year I wrote a novella too. So I'll have a new um, Christmas novella in the Country Store series that'll be out next fall in a, a collection called Christmas Scarf Murder. So all the Is that with some other authors? It's with Carleen O'Connor again. Oh, yeah. And um, actually, I can't remember the third author. Yeah, I just see a lot of them, um, like the anthology she's come out around Christmas with Lee Hollis and Leslie Meyer and and, and some Barbara, of those. Um, yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. A lot well, of people I, say they, um, Lee and Kay both said, and I agree too. I mostly read, mostly read women authors writing about women characters. Yeah. And I'm not totally against the other. It's just what I relate to. And with Cozies, there's not a whole lot of, you know, men in the mm -hmm. in the genre. And the few that I, like, I, I didn't know for a long time that, well, first of all, I interviewed Lee Hollis. And one, I didn't know that that was a um, gentleman, uh, that Rick, that writes most of it. And then, you know, his sister, but she does most of the recipes. Had no idea. I was like, man, there he's writing, you know. And Miranda James, I didn't know for a long time that that was um, yes. a male, but I think for the most part, it's, you know, obviously dominated by, by women. But I just feel like for me, even when I read outside the genre, I just relate to women writing about women. Yeah. I, and my friend, Ange Pompano, A-N-G, he has a new cozy out um, featuring a reluctant, what is it? A reluctant advice. <laughs> Or something. Um, it's a male who got a job. He's writing under a female name for the paper because um, he needed a job or something. I haven't read it yet, but it's, it's I think it's called a maybe it's or maybe it's a restaurant re reviewer or something. I think it's called a diet for death. I'm not sure, but oh, that's and, funny. And Pompano. He's he's a member of the of Sisters in Crime New England. Like he's been a member of our organization here for a long time, and oh. he's written a lot of fabulous short stories. Um, but I'm so happy for him. He's getting, getting novels out. So. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. And that sounds really fun. Like stuff like that, I would like. Right. Um, gonna, can I can I leave a comment too? Uh, I don't know if you can leave a comment, but you're welcome to obviously interact with people. They can hear you. Okay. Well, just um, if you, I don't know if you can type in A-N-G 
P O M P A N O. And A N G, say it again. I'm sorry. A N G. A N G. P O M P A N O. That's the author's name. If anybody wants to go find it, I can't remember the name. Yeah, yeah, two names. And just the first name. Oh, I'm sorry. There's a, there's a, I'm typing it again. There's um, a space. So Ange is the first name and then yeah, yeah. P-O-M-P-A-N-O. Awesome. Yeah. It's amazing how many books are written by an author in a short amount of time. I know, Kay. It's <laughs> incredible. What Sometimes when they tell me their schedules, I'm like, wow, that, that seems insane to me. And then a lot of people, did you at one point when you were writing or do you now have another job that you have to do? Oh, when I started getting published, I had a job. I was a, a software technical writer. I didn't okay. write the software. I wrote the book about the software and the help screens. Oh. Um, yeah. Yeah. I was doing that for about 20 years. In wow. I need that. In I need that. Yeah. And it was writing. You know, I'm working with words and with smart people. I was in the engineering department. But, um, you know, good pay, flexible hours, casual dress, like what's not to like. But, um you know, it was in, it was eight years ago, and I had gone out for a knee replacement. I'd been on medical leave for three, two months, and then I was working from home for a month. And I went back into the office, and every night I went, oh, my God, I have to do it again tomorrow. And <laughs> while, I was, while I was working from home, I also had a lot of time to work on my books, my novels. And I decided to cut my five-year plan short by three years, and I just, I just left the day job. Um, and I wouldn't be able to write three, four books a year if I was, if it was around the edges of a full-time job. Oh my gosh. And an hour commute each way. I was commuting into Boston and yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't write on work days. So I, I wrote short stories and stuff, but it was really hard. I wrote all weekend and I would carve out three day weekends and take myself on a somewhere out of the house, you know, to a friend's yeah. empty house or a motel or something and have a little writing marathon. But yeah. That's my, it's, this is now my full-time job and it has been for eight years. Yeah. Well, good. Yeah. Cause uh, it's just, I don't know how people find that time. Cajun, that's true. Cajun said, I was amazed to find out Jessica Beck is actually Tim Myers. They read oh. so feminine, feminine. And that person, I think the actual person is Tim Myers. Like I think that's, and they have like six pin names oh. and all of the rest of them are female. Except for the 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 one that he writes is Tim Myers. All the rest are female, and I agree with you. They they I read like I wouldn't have known that. I haven't read those. I have to look for that. Those are cozies. Yeah, Jessica Beck, the the one that she's talking about, Jessica Beck. It's the donut shop. There's like fifty five of them. I'm oh. not kidding. There's like fifty. I think there's fifty four in wow. the series. Yeah, wow. yeah. And then they write um like a candle one and um, a few others, but there's several pen names that they, that they write under. Interesting. Huh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So um, do you think you, oh, I'm sorry, go right ahead. No, I wasn't saying. Anything. Oh, you said you read a lot of cozies. Do you think that you would make a good sleuth? <laughs> Somebody asked me that at a book talk. <laughs> There was a murder in your town. Would the police come to you? And I said, no, <laughs> no, are you kidding? No, 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 no. Um, I don't think so. I like that's, that's messy and scary and too much responsibility and all that. No, I'm very happy having the ideas pop in my head and typing them out. But um, I, I don't, I'm curious and I'm a voyeur. You know, if I'm in public, I'm always watching people and listening to what they're saying. And, oh, that's an interesting walk. Maybe I can put that walk into a character. Or, you know, how is someone's mouth? Or what's their accent? Or what is those people's story at the next table? Not that I eat indoors. I'm still eating only outdoors if I go out. But, um, you know, I, I'm a big people watcher, but that does not make me a, a sleuth. No yeah. You know, I feel like I'm, I feel like in my life, I'm really observant, but then like, I, 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 honest to goodness, I do not ever, ever, even when people are like, oh, the murder was so obvious. I never figure it out. I mean, unless oh, it's, 
Um, in the books. Yeah. Oh yeah. In the books. I, I mean, I never figured out, I feel like I'm much more observant than that, but like the only, I, so my, my, like I, I tell, I was telling um, a couple other people, it's my newest strategy that I've been sticking to is I suspect everybody and I don't care who you are, you're suspect until you can prove to me otherwise. Cause then I have to be right at some point, Right. right. you know, so or <laughs> Yeah. Or, I, but I do like to brag that I usually always figure out who the victim's going to be. That's, you know, I do usually yeah. can. <laughs> so it's the only person at a cozy that nobody likes. I'm like, oh, you're going down. Like, <laughs> so we, You know, we authors play around a little bit with um, when to drop the body and, um, and who the victim's going to be. Um, and I don't know if people have read Barb Ross's, um, I think it's fogged in. People are, clam a lot bake. of people are a fan of the main clam bake a lot. And yeah. So in this book, in, oops, this series, um, it's a book group that reads, only reads cozy mysteries. That's the premise of this mm -hmm. series. And in Murder at the Lobster Shack, I, I ripped off with, with um, credit with acknowledgement, um, the beginning of that book, I think it's fogged in, um, where the first line is, Julia, there's a body in the walk-in. <laughs> where Gus, the, the, you know, the restaurant owner, shouts upstairs because he's there's a body in the walk-in cooler. Um, so this happens in this book, too, in the, in the beginning chapter. Um, oh. But that's the book they're reading in their book group. Oh, that's in. so funny. That's so and clever. So we go, oh, it's just like in the book, you know, and I acknowledge Barb and I, I got permission from her to do that before I started writing. But she's a good person. Oh, that is so awesome. And I'm so, I'm, I'm caught up and ready for the lobster shack. So I'm really excited about it. Thank I think it's the best. Um, hello, Leanna. It's good to see you today. Um, Hi, Kay said, yeah. Kay said, that's funny. <laughs> Cozies that keep me guessing um, who the murder is. I enjoy the most. Yeah, I don't necessarily want to figure it out easily, but I also don't want to ever not. I just, if I figured it out every once in a while, I'd feel a little bit better about, <laughs> about yeah. it. Um, do you so have one of my one of my Quaker midwife mysteries? I'm not going to tell you which one. Um, you know, I set up. I usually set up three or four or five plausible suspects when I'm writing, and yeah. sometimes I don't know who the bad guy is until. Uh, three quarters of the way through. I'm not an outliner. I don't plot. I was going to um, ask. That. Sometimes I just I just keep writing until I go. Okay, I got to pick one. But in this book, um, all the suspects turn out to be guilty, and that oh. was fun. <laughs> That's super interesting. One of the Quaker midwives. So. That I was going to ask you about that. Um, whether you consider yourself an outliner or pantser. Um, and I feel like I, you kind of already answered. You said you kind of just write by this, you know, right off the top of the cuff. I feel like those are my favorite authors. So it, that when you say that, I'm not surprised because I really enjoy the country series and the cozy caper series so much. Oh. Um, I haven't, I tried, I'm having a hard time finding the local farmers like in, um, but the eBooks and stuff. Um, oh, but the, the Oh. Yeah. But the um, I love the country store and the cozy. And so I'm not surprised that you're a pantser because I feel like people that write that way and don't always even know who their killer is, it feels more organic. Mm -hmm. Like I like that flow of the writing where it, it doesn't feel as outlined or as uh, and not to say I don't like people who write the other way, but I just feel like it just flows better for me. Like I can tell when, when, when authors say that they're usually the authors I really enjoy. I'm like, Oh, that makes sense. That's interesting. That's, that's interesting. Um, I mean, mostly for me, it's, it's just the way I feel comfortable writing, but also I, I, I highly suspect if I knew what was going to happen before I wrote it, and all I'd have to do is write the words. I would be so bored writing it that you would be bored reading it. Like that's just, I can't even conceive of it. Now my, my editor at Kensington, he, he asks for a synopsis of a book before I start writing it. He wants to approve the, the story idea. He would like, and I've said this at other book talks, he would like 10 single space pages. The most he's ever gotten is five double space. And that's <laughs> 
I don't want to know the story before I write it. But but that does kind of give me a scaffolding. Yeah. Um, Hank Philippi Ryan was talking last week on the Jungle Reds, uh, Jungle Red Writers blog. She's a panther. She's a complete panther. And she said somebody she knew talked about it. The difference between being an architect writer and a gardener writer. And I'm completely a gardener. She is too. And she writes brilliant books. They're thrilling. Yeah. So different kinds of books. But yeah. um, um, the fact that she's a pantser too, I, I love that. Um, um, but it, so it does give me, and I, I always, the synopsis always changes as I'm writing the book. But I have it in a file in my Scrivener yeah. project. And if I ever get the least bit stuck, I go and look at it and I go, oh, she was going to do that now. That's a good idea. <laughs> Let's never do that. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, so, so it can help um, in certain circumstances. But sure. I always, it always changes. And all I have to do is send him an updated one when I'm done, my editor, because they actually use that for, um, like, book jacket co copy and you know, the, their publishing catalog, what the book is about. That's one reason he wants it. Yeah. Because they use that and they want, they do that stuff like a year and a half in advance. Um, That's also so. crazy to me. Right. Yeah. When, when, when people say that, um, that will be my next subject is, do you feel like you, do you have a lot, I wanted to say hi to some people. Do you have, do you feel like you have control over your titles and all that stuff? Some people say yes. And some people say um, you know, not as much just because of the, the process. Um, it depends. It really depends on yeah, the Kensington. So. Um, the Cozy Caper ones have ended up with a pattern of murder at or murder in. So the first one is murder on Cape Cod, murder at the taffy shop, murder in the lobster shack. The fourth one is murder in a Cape Cottage. Um, Ooh. Fifth one is going to be murder in a Cape bookstore. I'm so excited. Five. There's going to be at least five. So those are, there's going to be at least six. Oh. So I've been offered three more books. I haven't signed the contract yet, so don't tell anybody. All Congratulations. Well, uh, no. He'll see. I'll, I'll get it. Months of work. And um, the country store mysteries need puns. And I'm terrible at those titles, so I crowdsource them. And I put it, if I, sometimes I think of a good title. Like I, I did um, Strangled Eggs and Ham was mine <laughs> a couple years ago. Like in our family, we always called them Strangled Eggs instead of Scrambled Eggs. We just. Oh, that's funny. With my kids and stuff. Um, uh, but sometimes I'm completely hopeless. And I put it on last week. I said, my editor wants a St. Patrick's Day book. And I need a punny title that has to do with food. And Grace Koshida, who is a big fan up in Ottawa, Canada, she said, what about Four Leaf Cleaver? I went, all right, that's it. That's, it was fabulous. And my editor loved it. So we're good. Other ones I have proposed, in fact, I think Nacho Average Murder, he didn't Love like it. That's what I said in California, Southern California. He at first didn't like it. And I had told some people on like Save Our Cozies, the Facebook group, and people said, oh, that sounds like a great title. So I told him, I said, you know, I've got some fan interest in that title. And then he said, oh, I guess that's fine. So it really <laughs> depends. And sometimes he'll say, he doesn't usually suggest a pun title. Um, um, and as for covers, he asked for cover ideas. Um, and I've learned since uh, grilled for murder, which is a second country store mystery. You know, I told him sort of what happened in it, but I forgot to tell him the time of year. And it's set after Thanksgiving in Indiana. And the cover has green grass and green leaves <laughs> on the trees. And I went, no, 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 no. And it, but it was too late. Once they do the cover, it's too late. Again, that long lag time. Um, so now the first thing I say is, it takes place in mid-March. There's no leaves on the trees. <laughs> on the ground, you know. Um, and then I say kind of what happens and my ideas. And I, I actually have a Pinterest board for every book. And I put cover ideas and I send the link to that Pinterest board to my editor. And he can give that to the art department. Oh, that's really cool. That's how the covers go. Once they're done, though, I can't change it. 
Yeah. That's wow. That's yeah. funny. Um, Bookster. Hello, Bookster. She said, hello, ladies. I never figure it out either. I'm glad I'm not alone. Me too. That makes me feel better that I'm not alone. I was thinking something was wrong with me. Well, I, I, I mean, I never figure it out. So that's funny. Um, hello, Cozy Reads Mystery. So Cozy Reads Mystery hosts, um, we have a killing time with Cozy's group. That's oh, what nice. we call ourselves because it sounds like a cozy. So we're like, oh, that's fun. Um, and so we um, host lives on certain days of the week. And then we also have a disc cozy mystery discord um, where we're always talking about books and cozy mysteries and all that stuff. And um, she hosts it with me. She reads exclusively cozies. She reads nothing else. And she's nice. read like everything. And I think your country store is one of her favorites. She probably has oh. put it in here somewhere at some point. Hello, Melanie. She said, I never figure it out. And I like it that way. I'm with you. I love when the author totally fools me. I do too. The punnier, the better for me. I don't know if punnier is a word, but yes. I, why I not? Love why not? Uh, thank you, everybody. That's good. Um, I re Susan G said, I really figure out who did it. Hi, Susan. Hi, Susan. I, I, I love, love when you crack up at punny. They make me laugh. <laughs> I love them. Oh, Kate oh, nice. bought Murder on Cape Cod. I'm so happy. Oh, um, you'll you. really enjoy it. It's great. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, great. Oh, good. I'm glad you like the narrator. Um, I, I enjoy it too. I'm. She's my narrator. The, when I listened to the first one, I kind of went, oh, she sounds too old. But um, she does a great job with the voices and everything, and she's consistent. And what more can you ask for? So. Yeah, absolutely. So when you're forming characters for your books, and you were talking earlier about you're very observant of people and you like to, you know, I wonder what's going on in their lives and, oh, I should use this and this. <clears throat> Do you ever put real people in your books <clears throat> for whatever reason? Or like, you know, if somebody makes you mad, you're like, oh, I'm going to run. <laughs> I won't tell you which and where, but there are <laughs> of my ex-husband in several characters. <laughs> because, really, he had a lot of negative aspects, and they're perfect at putting characters. And I don't, you know, it's not him. It's not that person. Um, <laughs> and now I'm with a, with a much nicer man. <laughs> Good. I've been for almost 20 years. So um, I try not to put real characters in my books because they might need to do something that that real person wouldn't do. And so it would, it could, you know, hinder my writing or the storytelling. That said, um, my mother um, is the person who taught me to read mysteries. We had a living room, a high ceiling living room with, you know, tall bookshelves that were full of, at least her area was all mysteries. All kinds of mysteries. I mean, uh, Agatha Christie and oh, yeah. Poe and Sherlock Holmes and and Earl Stanley Gardner and everybody. Um, she died six months before my first book came out. Oh. So I put her in the local foods mysteries as Uncle Al Great Uncle Albert's um, girlfriend in the assisted living residence. Oh. So Marilyn Muller is in there, and except even her character evolved as I was writing it, my mother never drank a drop of alcohol and she never had a smartphone and she never learned how to use a computer. But Miss, Miss Marilyn has an iPhone and she'll have a half a glass of wine with Albert and at happy hour, and, you know, senior happy hour. Um, so if you read those books, that's my mom, that's mine. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. That's really my cool. Tribute. My tribute to her, yeah. Yeah. Um, um, Susan G said, I just started reading. Oh, where am I at? There we go. I just started Murder reading Murder in Cape Cod. Thank you. I yeah. Love it. I hope you love it. I have a lot of fun writing that. And the um, so my Mac Almeida, the character, the protagonist is allergic to mammals. So she has an African gray parrot as a pet. So there's no cats on the cover. They haven't put Belle, the, the parrot, on the cover yet, but maybe they will soon. Um, and she, yeah. I love that she carries around an EpiPen and that it's really talked about. And I, you know, um, 
yeah, because I, I, I also, well, you know, I have a lot of allergies, so it's kind of the same. So it's, you know, like you don't see that very often, but she always talks about, I put my book bag on with my EpiPen and I'm getting ready. And I'm like, that's really awesome that that's kind of. You know, I stole that from my sister-in-law, um, Mary Lockhart up in New Hampshire, because she had a near fatal bee sting about 10 years ago. And she now does not leave the house without her mm -hmm. little cross bag with EpiPens and, and Benadryl in it. And um, it just seemed like a nice little twist to put in a character. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I'm so excited to try. I know. The, the... I hope they're not. They might be kind of hard to find. Uh, I know that's library what I did have them. They got nice library library journal reviews. Um, they're, I'm not writing that series actively. But I bet if you hunt around, you can you can find a library or bookstores or eBay or I don't know what. <laughs> don't know yeah, what I've been I've been on the I've been on the lookout. Um, when you your series that takes place in Indiana, did you you said you grew up in South or not South Carolina? You grew up in Cali and you've lived in New England, right? Or yes. Yeah. Um, how did you end up in in Indiana with your uh, main character, with uh, Robbie for the country store? Well, um, so I did grow up in a you know a suburb near Pasadena, California, and um, but I went, I got accepted to Indiana University for a doctoral program, mm. and uh, I started in 1977. Yes, I'm that old. Um, but what I love about Bloomington, Indiana is a fabulous, it's a small town with a great big university in it. You can walk and bike everywhere. You can have quiet time. You can get out of town into the countryside easily, but there's a lot of cultural stuff. There's a food co-op, there's political activity, whatever you want, you know, big sports events. Um, but also my great, great, great grandfather founded the university. Oh. And there's been a Maxwell every generation. My dad was an undergrad there. My grandfather was the captain of the basketball team, the IU basketball oh. team, the legendary in 1916, you know, and he wasn't that tall either. Um, cool. So there's always been a Maxwell, there's a Maxwell Hall on campus. It's our, my direct ancestor. So that's one reason I was delighted to go to school there for five years. And so Brown County is the next county over. And I, we would go, you know, friends, we'd go visit Nashville and, um, and actually, I had two friends dropped out of the, grad, the linguistics graduate program and bought a rundown country store and fixed it up into a bed and breakfast. And we, we all went out and helped demolish. And then we all went to the grand opening. So that was kind of the seed for the country store mysteries. And it's That's just such a lovely part of the world. It's, it's quieter and people are nice. They don't talk too fast. You know? <laughs> I don't know. It's just kind of, it's not, it's not idyllic. Of course it has problems, but um, I, I love setting a series. Show. And I have a yeah. sister who's north of Indianapolis. So she's one of my Hoosier culture consultants. Nice. Nice. Yeah. That's awesome. What a cool story. Uh, um, my library has some, and I bought two on Kindle. Um, they didn't have the series. Nice. Cozy. Hey, Storm. Storm said oh, hi. Welcome in to say hi. We're on our way home from church picnic and uh, reception. Not great. Gotcha. Oh, okay. Hi, gotcha. Storm. For well, thank you for popping in, Storm. She said, um, Cozy said, I love how much Pans and Pancakes is a part of each book. Uh, yeah, because a lot of us um, that are Cozy fans, and I don't want to speak for everybody. I know for me, and I know Cozy feels this way. Um I like the mystery, but it's definitely secondary for me. The reason I love Cozy so much is the town, is the where they work. I like the everyday mundane stuff. I like when they're just walking about town and speaking to everybody and they know their name and they, you know, are going here to see such and such. Or, or I like when they're in the um, pancakes and she's just making, you know, food or whatever it is. I like all that stuff. So we love that. That's included. That's so a lot of breakfast prep. She does a lot of breakfast prep and yeah. thinking in the afternoons. Yeah. Yeah. Anita. Hello, Anita. She said, I love no greater crime. Oh, <laughs> I love the name. Oh my gosh. That's so funny. 
Um, I came I, up with that name too. I came up with no greater fun. That I, it's a good one. I the the puns I love them. I feel like I'm really there when I read the Country Store series. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I feel it, like it really it's hit a, hit a chord with readers. I mean, these books are so popular. I'm really really grateful for all you readers, uh, reviewers. Um, it's it really warms my heart. And I'll tell you a secret. My editor has said, oh, I'll publish those indefinitely. So right now I'm writing the last one under contract, book 11. Um, but he's already said, well, when that comes up for renewal, we'll plan this. So I'm, there will be, I haven't signed the contract, but I am pretty sure there will be at least three more books, if not 20. <laughs> Wow, that's so exciting. Yeah, yeah. What what a great what a great series. It really is. Um so you read a lot of mystery. Well, your mom, you know, influenced you in in reading mysteries. Um I know you said you read a lot of mysteries. It, I'm going to knock on wood, but if you were offed, oh, I know that's, you know. Um who would you want to solve your crime? What TV, what book? detective would you want to solve your crime oh wow i mean who would step in for robbie or just if you were if you were if you were taken out what oh. who would you want to solve your who would you want on the case just avenge your death and bring justice <laughs> oh if i were murdered yeah oh, that's why i'm knocking on wood that you're not <laughs> oh i thought you were gonna say who's gonna continue writing my books no, okay. no, sorry. Oh, okay, okay, okay. All right, all right. I'll calm down now. Um, <laughs> um, oh, wow. That's a great question. Um, you know, I don't know how many cozy authors know her, but Julia Spencer Fleming is a New England author. She lives in Maine. She writes a amazing series set in the Adirondacks in New York. Um, and she has a police chief, Russ Ferguson, Russ, uh, Russ, I can't remember his last name. And, and a female Episcopalian priest who's a former Navy helicopter pilot. And Claire Ferguson, I want Claire Ferguson to solve my murder. Um, they aren't they're traditional mysteries. They're not cozy particularly. They, she's got some dark. I mean, the first line of her very first book, I think, is it was a hell of a day <laughs> to lose a baby or to drop a, like, some, they, they found a baby and it was a middle of winter in the Adirondacks. And that was, so that's like the first line of her first book, which won the Agatha for best first novel. Um, Anyway, Claire Ferguson is a fabulous character. She's got a little baby of her own now, and and she just goes to bat for people. She's so fierce. Um, so I'll pick her, even though she's not a cozy. Oh, no, no, it's okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Claire Ferguson, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know, because you said, yay, that makes me excited. She's talking about that you're going to be able to continue writing the Country Store series for a long time. Yeah. yeah, that's super exciting. Thank you. I'm excited too. Do you have any interest in writing and in, in like starting a new series? Oh, I'm trying to start a new series. Are I you? Have a new <laughs> historical book. Um, it, it's cozy. Um, well, I've written two. You know, I've been writing too much. Um, so I wrote. I wrote a, a historical series, a historical book, novel, mystery, set in Pasadena, California in 1920, 1920, with a fictionalized version of both my grandmothers as amateurs, as private investigators. Oh, that's funny. And um, they were as unalike as you can imagine. So my mother's mother, Ruth, was a little bit shorter than I am now. Well, she's about the size I am now. Um, with her little blue rayon dresses and her white sausage curls. She could do anything domestic. She could bake from scratch, knit, crochet, sew, sew Barbie doll clothes. You know how, how little Barbie doll sleeves are? Yeah. She sewed Barbie doll clothes for us, wool coats for our Barbie dolls. 
And she could also shoot a gun, which I didn't know till a couple years ago. I found a picture that was in my mom's stuff after the, after she died. Um, there's my grandmother sitting on a rock. She grew up in the Northwest, you know, rough times. I mean, she was born in 19, 1894. And she's sitting on a rock with a long homespun skirt and a hat. And she's reading a letter and she has a rifle on her lap. <laughs> whoa, Mama Ruth, look at you. Like Nobody ever talked about that. My other grandmother was sort of austere and reserved, and she liked her cigarettes in a cigarette holder, and she liked her cocktail before dinner, and she could drive. She was one of the first women to drive across country in an automobile in 1918. Um, so I have made them both into private investigators. They have an agency. And um, so far, that book is not sold. It's out with one more publisher. My agent is really trying. So I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen with that one. So then I brought Dorothy, the austere one. I brought her to Boston in 1926. And she's now solving a crime with Amelia Earhart, the real Amelia Earhart, who lived in Boston in 1926. She worked at a settlement house oh, and, flew, yeah. and flew on the weekends. This is true. Um, What's not true is that she was worth becoming an amateur sleuth with my friend. <laughs> uh, so fingers crossed for that one. I have no idea where these are going. I don't know if I'll end up uh, self-publishing. You know, I don't know. I don't know where I can sell them, if I can get the hook strong enough. My agent thinks Amelia Earhart would be a great sell. Um, so we'll see. Yeah. Well, the one uh, with the two grandmothers, um, I am a huge, like a big buzzword for me is like seniors or like, um, you know, grandmas or anything like that. I love older characters in my cozies, like spunky old characters, like a, like a, what you just described sounds hilarious. Like this, pre, um, you know, very woman in a long dress and she just looks very, she's got lace gloves on and then she's holding the shotgun. Like that's up my alley. I'm I love older characters and books, so that's super exciting. Would you ever consider self-publishing some of those? You know, I might because I really feel called to write those characters. I actually, my my grandmothers are not old in the book; they're in their twenties, mm -hmm. they're young. Um, and but I also love my older characters. I love Aunt Adele, and and um, uh, Abba Reba the grandmother in the Cozy Capers, who's this little tiny black woman. So my, my protagonist is half Cape Verdean and half, you know, Caucasian. Cape Verdean being African diaspora in the, in the Atlantic, off the coast of Africa. Um, and so, and then her grandmother, <clears throat> Cape Verdean grandfather married this little Reba, who was a English teacher in the Boston schools for until she retired. And she's just a, She's a hit. She's got a little telescope in her apartment that she keeps track of what's going on in town. And she goes to water aerobics and she rides her big adult tricycle and she, she knows everything. Love so I love writing the older characters. Um, these, these books of my grandmother's, they're young women. That's just, that's just how I set it up, but who knows? Who knows? Um, at this point in my career, I would like a major contract for new books that I write. Um, but I, I don't close any doors. I don't close any doors at all. In yeah. fact, I've just, I've just reissued the first um, four Quaker midwife mysteries who were, that were published by Midnight Inc., which was uh, discarded as a press by its parent company, Llewellyn. And so they were out of print last fall. I reissued them as ebooks this winter, and right now I'm in the process of getting them out as paperbacks again, just so they're available. The last mm. three books are, um, they're from Beyond the Page and they're available in ebook and, and print, you know, but, um, yeah. so I don't know. I don't, I don't close doors. I don't close doors. Yeah, that's, well, that's smart. I, I mean, keeping, you know, your options open is always a, you know, smart thing to do. I love that. Yeah, um, everybody thinks it sounds perfect. Those books sound very good. Your grandmothers sound perfect for Mystery Cozy. Yeah. And Cozy said, our group loves to read self-published authors on Kindle Unlimited. Yeah, um, we do read, we, you know, we do, um, we read a lot of both, but um, I feel like self-publishing is um, starting, to, I think people are starting to learn that 
it doesn't make it less of a book because I think that's been a stigma for a long time. Yes. But I, I feel like with Kindle Unlimited and how popular it is, it's really kind of changed that yeah. that perspective a lot. So uh -huh. we I mean, read a lot of Kindle Unlimited. There have been lower quality self-published books. Um, my books wouldn't be, of course, lower quality. I mean, I get, you know, I have a professional editor and, and I get professional mm -hmm. covers and... Um, but, but I think that was a stigma. Plus, you're normally not eligible for awards like the Agathis if you're, if you're not traditionally published. I didn't um, know that. That's interesting. I didn't, I didn't yeah. know that. Most of the major awards, you're not um, eligible if, you're, if you published it yourself. Okay. Um, but on the other hand, like I am, my name is much better known now. And um, so self-publishing might work for me because absolutely. I, I mean, I have to do all the work <laughs> to get it. Yeah. Out um, yeah. But then also get all the money. So. I've started including, so I do a spotlighting cozy series on, on my channel where I take a different theme and I talk about all the kind of series that are out there. So maybe culinary or bakery or whatever it is. And I used to kind of only include, traditionally published books, but in the last like three months or so, I've started including a lot of the KU as well separately, but like, because I read a lot of those and I really, really enjoy them. So I think it's a great possibility. Um, Anita said she can't wait to read them. Oh, good. good. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, so what is your next book coming out? Oh, the lobster. Is that, is that the closest, the next one coming out? Murder at the Lobster Shack is the next one coming out, and followed by um, Batter Off Dead in February. So, and that, the, okay, so, so this is a Murder at the Lobster Shack is the next Cozy, Cozy Capers. Capers, and then um, Batter Off Dead is Country Store number 10, right? 10, and that'll be out at the end of February. And Yay. then, then next fall will be. Um, the Christmas Scarf novella collection and Murder in a Cape Cottage, both in the fall of 2022. It's so amazing you already know that. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, as soon as the publishers, like... they go way out. And I have a little chart on my wall. Um, it's like a three-year chart, and it's nothing but due dates and release dates. So I have it at a glance right there. I don't have to open a file. I don't have to get out my paper count. It's just boom. When my books are due and when they release. Do you write more than one book at once? Like, are you writing something in the country store and Cozy Caper at the same time? Do you do that? Oh, no. Okay. I, 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 try like... not to. I try not to. I mean, I like to immerse myself in a first draft and finish it. Finish the draft and then I'll get into revisions. The only time that blows up is if I get in proofs or copy edits on a book in a different series and they're due in two weeks so i have to put down the first draft do those send them in and then go back to my first draft um no i mean i can work on a short story maybe like in the afternoons when i'm writing a book uh but even short stories i usually wait till i'm like i'm done with the first draft i want to let it sit for a couple weeks if i have time and then maybe i'll work on a short story or something else but um, no, one book at a time. That's my Yeah, memory. I think that's smart. I would, I, uh, I mean, I think I would get, I would get them mixed up. Like I'd be writing, you know, Robbie and uh, Cozy Capers and all of a sudden she's, you know, in the bicycle shop and <laughs> things would be all out of whack. Um, Cozy said, Julianne Lindsay, who was traditionally published, is now releasing a self-published series. Uh, first book is Burden of Proof. Oh, oh, Burden of Poof. Yeah, it came out oh. like last week. Nice, and then, nice title. <laughs> yeah. And then Storm said, you have a following, so they will probably follow. Yeah, I think I, yeah. Yeah. I think if it, if, if, it, if it was something that didn't flourish any other way, I think that that is very, very true because your name is so, is, you know, everybody knows that name. Everybody. Especially the Maddie Day name. Yeah. Um, so what do you think, you all? If I were to publish a historical mystery series, basically cozy, under Maddie Day, would that surprise my readers or would you expect only contemporary cozies from Maddie Day? Oh, I, for me, um, and people obviously um, might have different answers. I don't, I don't think so. Like, 
I don't know that I expect any one type of contemporary or, co or, or historical. I think I'd be surprised if Maddie Day all of a sudden put out a thriller. I'd be like, oh, not right. that I'd be against it, but I'd be a lot more shocked than if you just put out a different type of cozy. Uh huh. Okay. For me. Right. Yeah. But that's good to know. I don't know. I don't know how um, how everybody buddy else feels, but no, I think that a historical cozy would. I think the name is gonna is gonna yeah. people are gonna yeah. be interested because my other historicals are as Edith Maxwell, um, but that name is not has not made the splash that Maddie Day has made. Anita said no. I think you can keep Maddie Day. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I think I think so too. I think so too. Oh, our stupid smoke alarms. Oh yeah. no. Yeah, are you okay? <laughs> Oh my gosh. We can we can we can, we can hop off of this phone. Oh, we're gonna ride with the radio. Yeah. Right now. Oh, oh, it went off. It went off. Oh good. Okay. Sure. Is like, everything okay? You, so you don't smell fire. anything, they right? Go, they just go crazy once in a while. Oh, oh my gosh, that's so yeah. They just go crazy. Sometimes that, that happens. I think when they're low in batteries, sometimes they do that or ours yeah. do, I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then Cozy said, I'm willing to try any series by an author I like. I agree with that. Especially, right. you know, when you know you like an author because it's about the way they write and you know you like that. Right. Um, I, Kay said, your name would attract me to your Cozy. Yeah. Oh, she's. <laughs> that was the smoke alarm. Yeah. I, um, oh, so Storm really loves historicals. Great. So I think Great. she'd be very interested. And she reads a lot of historical cozies and a lot of historical. Um, yeah. And then Cozy said, LOL. Yeah, well, <laughs> I did mute yeah. my phone at least. But. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, um, no. I think that. I'm trying to think. So um, of schedules coming out, I would love if you want to come back like before number 10 and you want to come back and like talk about your newest book. I'd love to have you. I'd love to. Absolutely. Next, next January or February. Yeah. 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 Around that time when, when right. batter off dead is coming out and all that. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. I'd love to. Uh, I hope people will come and visit us at wick wicked authors.com. So we, if you haven't, Stop by the blog. We're a, um, a six author, cozy and historical so far. <laughs> Sorry, uh, I love it. Um, all their books are all the, all the other authors' books are fabulous, and we have Wicked Wednesday every Wednesday where we all chime in on the same topic. Um, you know, tomorrow I'm doing a cover reveal, so we each have one solo day. So tomorrow is my solo day, and it's a cover reveal of Batter Off Dead. And Ooh, about that and giveaway. Um, so, um, and I'm also on Mystery Lover's Kitchen with an original recipe every second, second and fourth Fridays. I get um, that email and it's so much fun. I've talked about it a lot before because I've um, interviewed Leslie Budowitz and a couple other people yeah. that are on, yeah. um, but I'll put that link onto um, the description of this one as well. Her, um, MaddieDayAuthor.com is in the description already. Um, do you keep that up to date? Anybody can come and find whatever's yeah. going on with you. Yeah, um, EdithMaxwell.com is all everything too. Okay, yeah. so, yeah. Um, but I love the Mystery Lovers Kitchen. I I get the email, and it's so much fun to see everybody's recipes and stuff. Yeah, I really enjoy it. Well, thank um, you so much for having me, and thank you to all you lovely readers who are chiming in and asking questions and responding. Cajun yeah. said, I read several authors who have different kinds of cozies under the same name. If I like the author. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. If I like the author, I'm probably willing to try anything they write. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, no, I want to thank you too, because this has been so much fun and really I'd love to have you back around January. And I'm really looking forward to the lobster lobster shack coming out. Um, I'm caught up and ready. So that's super exciting. Great. Great. So send me your mailing address. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, I will. Yeah. So um, 
Thank you. Thank you so much. And I will send you my mailing address and then we can arrange something for January. Everybody said, thank you. This is fun. Uh, thank you. Thanks, all. Melanie. Thanks. Yeah. Enjoyed yeah. hearing about your newer books that will be coming out. Absolutely. And now I got to go find the Quaker series because I really am interested and intrigued by everybody being guilty of the crime. Yeah, that was a fun yeah. one. I mean, they're all fun, but that was a particularly fun Absolutely. one. Absolutely. I have to pick one. Why do I have to pick one? Let's see if I can make them all guilty. And I did. So. Oh, that's so interesting. So, well, thanks again and take care. And I'll talk to you on email. Thanks, super, everybody. Super. Thanks. Bye. Have a lovely rest of your you Sunday. You too. Bye, everybody.